All right, I got a chance to watch Godzilla and Kong, The New Empire. Um, well, it's mostly more Kong than Godzilla, but, uh, you know, it, it, I, I wasn't that blown away by it. The best part about it is the Kong story. Uh, he has a he has a very good and, and uh, touching and endearing performance. <laughs> Once again, the weakest element uh, is uh, the human story, which was just just stupid and uh, too sugary and silly, uh, and uh, very formulaic, and uh, the characters and how they performed and whatnot, and just. Could have used a lot less than that. It doesn't have to be that way, but for, for whatever reason, they just can't seem to conceive a compelling narrative for any human characters in these uh, giant monster kaiju uh, movies. So, uh, of course, it's also hurt by the magnificence of Godzilla Minus <laughs> One. Which did have compelling human characters in there. Uh, along with the monster attack of Godzilla, so on and so forth. And it just worked so well and so beautifully. To a much lesser extent, uh, another entity in all of this that, uh, b by comparison to this movie, is far superior was the Monarch series. I mean, uh, the, the primary focus there would be the human story and the, the, the history of Monarch and so on and so on. And how that, that played out, which is basically a soap opera, but that's the only way to do that, uh, with uh, cameos from monsters and then Godzilla himself. Interestingly enough, Godzilla had more to do in that series than he did in this movie. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, but uh, King Kong, uh, if it was up for an Oscar, he'd win for Best Actor. <laughs> So a lot of it is exploring, uh, you know, the altered or the the inner world, whatever you want to call it, the subterranean world where uh, King Kong comes from, and you get a little more uh, of his story, so to speak, and what uh, uh, he's interested in. Uh, he's searching for his own people. Spoiler: he finds them, but this leads to a terrible threat, and then there's. Sort of a not a copy of Godzilla, but a similar uh, creature, uh, except this one doesn't breathe. Breathe, uh, with, I don't know what does Godzilla breathe? Uh, radioactive fire, whatever that is. Uh, this one uh, it has Iceman powers and can freeze everything. I don't know how, but it can. And uh, but it's also uh, controlled by some sort of kryptonite that uh, the evil Kong has. There's an evil Kong, uh, the Scar King, and so he's the real villain of all this. And so there you go. So eventually you get into the big battles. Uh, there's some miscommunication, somewhat. Uh, King Kong has got to try to recruit Godzilla, but Godzilla doesn't quite understand it f at first, but then comes to understand it. And then they're bros, you know? So uh, then they team up to take on uh, the bad guys. Uh, and, um, well, you know, it works out. <laughs> uh, again, the human element is just, it's there. And you just got to, ah, geez, I get through this when they get back to King Kong, you know? Uh, but there's this stuff that's so over the top and just thrown in, it's absurd. Um, there, there's a lot of advanced technology from Monarch and whatnot, uh, where to where now they have what looks like spaceships they're flying around in and stuff like that. But yeah, I, well, because we knew there were giant monsters and we would have to deal with it, we developed technology for it, you know. Okay. Um, and then uh, King Kong gets injured at one point and needs help, so the humans help him out. And uh, they're able to give him a Transformer glove. Because, <laughs> you know, they had one of those laying around. And uh, so that gives him a little more of an edge to defend himself against uh, these monsters that have a uh, little extra power to them and all that. But... <laughs> Just 
<laughs> it's a bit much uh, that they were able to do that, but whatever. There's giant monsters in the movie and all that. So hey, just go with it. But the, the, that's the problem with the human narratives in it is that it, it's so badly done that it kicks you out of the of the movie. Uh, the, the strongest narrative is King Kong, and it's interesting because King Kong, when he's interacting with the other giant apes, it's <laughs> even though. <he's, laughs> Obviously can't speak ape, but you understand exactly what's going on. You know what they're saying. <laughs> and it's uh, it's more compelling <laughs> with their grunts and growls <laughs> than the dialogue <laughs> of the idiots, you know. <laughs> so uh, even with uh, some of the, you know, predictable soap opera elements of the Monarch series, it just... It flowed better and was more performed better. Some things were, you know, you knew why it was there and that kind of thing. Uh, but for the most part of its overall narrative and plot worked much better. If they could combine the two where they had some sort of narrative uh, there of just basic, they're exploring this new world and they're looking at it. And all, well, not new. If they're, they, they're all part of the monster verse. So Monarch knew about it all this time. But anyway, if you're exploring it and you send a team down and it's, it's involved with what's going on with Kong and Godzilla and all that, that would have been better, but you could make it more of a professional team and whatnot instead of just goofballs uh, because you think it's funny. Uh, none of them were funny. Um, you know, and then, of course, the special girl is the key to it all. <laughs> Again! Nothing against. She's a lovely little girl, and that's all nice. But, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, Kong uh, does his best to uh, try to save this movie, and I think for the most part, uh, probably that wins for people that are big fans of King Kong and Godzilla films and stuff like that, and you get the spectacular fights and they do an awful lot of damage i mean the tourism industry for egypt is just pretty much ruined uh almost ruined uh, rome but the Colosseum is still pretty much there even though godzilla has decided to make that his bed so uh, there is that uh but that's the kind of thing that you go to see the, the big monsters fight and you, you get a, a, a lot of that so it has that selling point uh but man once again does the human part of the story just drag it down? And uh, it's like, oh, you just get through. The oh, boy, there's King Kong. Okay, now we got <laughs> That's the way it goes. <laughs> and uh, just uh, they just really didn't have much for Godzilla to do, which is a bit of a letdown. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, King Kong for the win on this one, I guess. <laughs> His performance was a uh, pretty standout. And... Uh, I think for the for uh, whatever or, or profits or success this movie has is owed primarily to King Kong. 